In this video, I'm going to show you how to do focus stacking on a Sony camera with the Camranger 2. Now, the Camranger 2 also works with Canon, Nikon, and Fujifilm cameras, but there are separate focus stacking videos for each of those. Focus stacking is the process of combining multiple images into one single image for enhanced depth of field. Especially for macro photography, the depth of field for a single image can be very shallow. So you can perform a process of capturing multiple images and adjusting the focus slightly between each image. You then combine or stack those images together in post-processing to create a single image with a much larger depth of field. It's what's typically used for, say, pictures of insects where the whole thing is in focus, or for small product photography shots like of jewelry, like rings. Now, as you might imagine, the process of actually doing the stacking of adjusting and capturing and adjusting and capturing can be pretty tedious. The Camranger 2 automates this process and makes it much simpler and easier to use. Let's see how it works. Here we are connected with the Camranger 2 to a Sony A7R 3 First thing we want to do is turn on Live View by pressing the I button. Now you can see we have a live view feed of what the camera is seeing. Next, we want to open the focus stacking tab by pressing the magnifying glass. Now I intentionally left the focus mode in autofocus, so you can see if that happens, it gives you a little message on top telling you that the focus mode must be set to manual to make incremental focus changes. So I'll go ahead and press the toggle button to toggle from AF to MF. And now you can see we have our controls. Up at the top, we have incremental focus adjustments in large, medium, or small step sizes. And pressing down will move the focus closer to the camera. And pressing up moves the focus further from the camera. And then down below, we have the focus stacking section. Now, for those of you who don't shoot Sony, and there's focus stacking videos for each of those cameras, Canon, Nikon, and Fuji, you'll notice that there's an option for the Cam Ranger to automatically determine the step size and the number of shots, and you just put in, you just set up your near and far focus points. Unfortunately, we can't do that with Sony. We don't have any way of reliably tracking the focus changes, which is how we do it with the other cameras. So instead, we use what we call classic focus stacking, which is the method the original Camranger uses. So don't worry if you're a Sony shooter, you can still do focus stacking, you can still get great results the same way people have with the original Camranger for many years, um, but you will not have the more advanced option. And how the classic focus stacking works is you select the number of shots and the step size, small, medium, or large, and it tells the camera when you hit start, okay, just start from where you are, take that many shots, and adjust the focus by the small, medium, or large increment between each shot. So the obvious next question is, well, how many shots do I need, and what increment do I need? It can require a little bit of experimentation, but it's usually pretty easy to figure out. Typically for real close-up macro stuff, you do a small or maybe medium step size. And for more landscape type scenarios, typically a large or possibly a medium, depending on your aperture. And obviously aperture does play a big role in this as aperture is a major factor in depth of field of a single capture. Right now I have it set to 4, which is a little wide open for a focus stack. Typically you'd maybe want to do more like f11, but it's good for this non-macro scene because uh, it better emulates the shallower depth of field in a true macro setup. So let's do a little experiment with how you might determine what stack size or what uh, step size you want for your stack. I'll go ahead and just do a touch focus there on the magazine and I will capture an image. 
Next, I will adjust the focus. I'll do it a medium step size. And I could hear and you could see a slight change. I'll now capture another image. Okay, so now we have two images that we've captured with a medium focus change in between. And if we go between the two, we can see a slight difference. So let's zoom in and we can see, okay, um, the U and the G are definitely in focus. B is pretty good. Um, R, L, definitely once you're getting over here, it's, it's no longer in focus. So now let's go to this capture and we can see L definitely in focus. R is pretty good. B is starting to get out of focus. Um, so I would say with our current f-stop, the medium step size is probably just barely good enough. Um, ideally, you might change the aperture slightly. We could increase it if we're able to, say, uh, 4, 5, or 5. Now we're pretty confident that we'll have good overlap within the... Um, but within the stack between the two images. Because what you don't want to have is have banding of out-of-focus strips between images. So now I feel pretty confident that a medium step size is good for this setup. And typically, you'll get a feel pretty quickly for how uh, large of a step size you want for different, different scenes. But this is a good way to just kind of check quickly what might be a good one. So I'll go ahead and turn Live View back on. And let's start more uh, here, let's say. And then I will do yep, medium step size, what we want. And then next question, obviously, is, OK, how many shots should I take? And typically, it's better to undershoot a little bit see where it ends, and then see if you need to start up again because you're already at the right spot. And again, this is one of the things where once you take a few stacks, you get a good idea of where you um, want to set the number of shots to. We don't really have any scene we care about too much, so I'll just put in 10 so we can see what that does. So I'll go ahead and set that, and then I'll go ahead and start. And it will go through the process of capturing an image, adjust the focus, capture an image, adjust the focus. You can see um, the speed at which it goes through. It is definitely a little slower on Sony than other cameras, but typically your scene is pretty stationary, otherwise it's going to be difficult regardless of your setup. I'll go ahead and speed up the last half of the focus stack. Okay, our stack is now complete. We can look at the results. And you can see we the 10 shots were enough to take it well beyond the end of the magazines hanging. Now we took the two sample shots, so the first one in our stack is actually this one. And we can see as we scroll through the focus slowly moving back. So really it seems like maybe that's nine shots, so probably about eight shots would have been plenty adequate to get from the beginning to the end. But again, like I said, overshooting slightly is fine as well. We'll just have extra shots that we can get rid of. Now, the Camranger 2 doesn't actually do any of the post-processing as far as combining the images. You will need to use some type of third-party software, and there's a few different options. Personally, I like Zareen Stacker, but options like Photoshop or Helic in Focus can work well also. So that's how to do focus stacking on a Sony with the Camranger 2. I hope the video was helpful. Definitely email us, support at camranger.com, with any questions. And thanks for watching. Bye.